Hare Krishna. Welcome back to our online Bhagavad Gita reading retreat lab. So in the last section, we have seen uh, the verse number one to verse number seven, and also chapter number 12. And uh, in that, those verses, Arjuna's inquiry was, who is better, personalist or impersonalist? And uh, also, Krishna has given explanation uh, regarding that. So to summarize, we have seen the, what is the devotion over impersonalism in that section. In today's section, we will read from verse number 8 to verse number 12. So in this section, the focus is uh, on the, what are the different progressive stages of devotional service. Okay. So we will see that, see that in this particular section. Now, without any delay, let's now go back to our Veda base. And we will start from chapter number 12, verse number 8. Translation. Just fix your mind upon me, the supreme personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me. Thus, you will live in me always, without a doubt. Purport. One who is engaged in Lord Krishna's devotional service lives in direct relationship with the Supreme Lord. So there is no doubt that his position is transcendental from the very beginning. A devotee doesn't live on the material plane. He lives in Krishna. The holy name of the Lord and the Lord are non-different. Therefore, when a devotee chants Hare Krishna, Krishna and his internal potency are dancing on the tongue of the devotee. When he offers Krishna food, Krishna directly accepts these eatables and the devotee becomes Krishnaized by eating the remnants. One who doesn't engage in such service cannot understand how this is so. Although this is a process recommended in the Bhagavad Gita and in other Vedic literatures. So now we'll move to the next verse. Chapter number 12, verse number nine. Translation. My dear Arjuna, O winner of wealth, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. In this way, develop a desire to attain me. Purport. In this verse, two different processes of Bhakti Yoga are indicated. The first applies to one who has actually developed an attachment for Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead by transcendental love. And the other is for one who has not developed an attachment for the Supreme Person by transcendental love. For this second class, there are different prescribed rules and regulations one can follow to be ultimately elevated to the stage of attachment to Krishna. Bhakti Yoga is the purification of the senses. At the present moment, in material existence, the senses are always impure, being engaged in sense gratification. But by the practice of Bhakti Yoga, these senses can become purified. And in the purified state, they become directly in contact with the Supreme Lord. In this material existence, I may be engaged in some service to the ma some master, but I do not really lovingly serve my master. I simply serve to get some money and the master also is not in love. He takes service from me and pays me. So there is no question of love, but for spiritual life, one must be elevated to the pure stage of love. That stage of love can be achieved by practice of devotional service performed with the present senses. This love of God is now in a dormant state in everyone's heart. And the love of God is manifested in different ways, but it is contaminated by material association now the heart has to be purified of the material association and that dormant natural love for Krishna has to be revived. That is the whole process. To practice the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga, one should under the guidance of an expert spiritual master, follow certain principles. One should rise early in the morning, take bath, 
enter the temple and offer prayers and chant Hare Krishna, then collect flowers to offer to the deity, cook foodstuffs to offer to the deity, take prashadam, and so on. There are various rules and regulations which one should follow, and one should constantly hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam from pure devotees. This practice can help anyone to rise to the level of God, and then he is sure of his progress into the spiritual kingdom of God. This practice of bhakti yoga under the rules and regulations with the direction of a spiritual master will surely bring one to the stage of love of God. Now we have seen in this uh, two verses, just to summarize, bhakti with internal senses, samrana atmika, manana atmika, and abhyasa rupa bhaktis. Fixing mind and intelligence on Krishna, and if it is difficult, and you have to do so. Now we will move to the next verse, that is the chapter number 12, verse number 10. Translation, if you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga, then just try to work for me, because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. Purport. One who is not able even to practice the regulative principles of bhakti yoga under the guidance of a spiritual master can still be drawn to this perfectional stage by working for the Supreme Lord. How to do this work has already been explained in the 55th verse of the 11th chapter. One should be sympathetic to the propagation of Krishna consciousness. There are many devotees who are engaged in the propagation of Krishna consciousness and they require help. So even if one cannot directly practice the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga, he can try to help such work. Every endeavor requires land, capital, organization, and labor. Just as in business, one requires a place to stay, some capital to use, some labor, and some organization to expand. So the same is required in the service of Krishna. The only difference is that in materialism, one works for the sense gratification. The same work, however, can be performed for the satisfaction of Krishna, and that is spiritual activity. If one has sufficient money, he can help in building an office or temple for propagating Krishna consciousness. Or he can help with publications. There are various fields of activity and one should be interested in such activities. If one cannot sacrifice the results of these activities, the same person still sacrifice some percentage to propagate Krishna consciousness. This voluntary service to the cause of Krishna consciousness will help one to rise to a higher state of love for God, whereupon one becomes perfect. So what we have seen in this particular verse, bhakti with external senses. So in the verse number, we have seen eight to nine, bhakti with internal senses. The verse, in this verse, we have seen bhakti with external senses. If endeavoring is also difficult, then work for Krishna. We will move to the next verse, chapter number 12, verse number 11. Translation. If, however, you are unable to work in this consciousness of me, then try to act, giving of all results of your work and try to be self-situated. Purport. It may be that one is unable even to sympathize with the activities of Krishna consciousness because of social, familial, or religious considerations, or because of some other impediments. If one attaches himself directly to the activities of Krishna consciousness, there may be objections from family members or so many other difficulties. For one who has such a problem, it is advised that he sacrifice the accumulated result 
of his activities to some good cause. Such procedures are described in the Vedic rules. There are many descriptions of sacrifices and special functions for the full moon day. And there is special work in which the result of one previous action may be applied. Thus, one may gradually become elevated to the state of knowledge. It is also found that when one who is not even interested in the activities of Krishna consciousness gives charity to some hospital or some other social institution, he gives up the hard earned results of his activities. That is also recommended here because by the practice of giving up the fruits of one's activities, one is sure to purify his mind gradually. And in that purified stage of mind, one becomes able to understand Krishna consciousness. Of course, Krishna consciousness is not dependent on any other experience because Krishna consciousness itself can purify one's mind. But if there are impediments to accepting Krishna consciousness, one may try to give up the results of his actions. In that respect, social service, community service, national service, sacrifice for one's country, etc. may be accepted so that someday one may come to the stage of pure devotional service to the Supreme Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, we find it is stated, Yataha Pravritir Bhutanam. If one decides to sacrifice for the Supreme Cause, even if he doesn't know that the Supreme Cause is Krishna, he will some come gradually to understand that Krishna is the Supreme Cause by the sacrificial method. So in this verse number 11, we have seen if Lord is saying, if working for Krishna is difficult, give up the results of your work. So that is a one line summary. Now we will move to the next verse. That is chapter number 12, verse number 12. Translation. If you cannot take to this practice, then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, however, is meditation. And better than meditation is renunciation of the fruits of action. For by such renunciation, one can attain peace of mind. Purport. As mentioned in the previous verses, there are two kinds of devotional service. The way of regulative principles and the way of full attachment and love to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For those who are actually not able to follow the principles of Krishna consciousness, it is better to cultivate knowledge because by knowledge, one can be able to understand his real position. Gradually, knowledge will develop to the point of meditation. By meditation, one can be able to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead by a gradual process. In the cultivation of knowledge, there are processes which make one understand that one himself is the supreme and that sort of meditation is preferred if one is unable to engage in devotional service. If one is not able to meditate in such a way, then there are prescribed duties as enjoined in the Vedic literature for the Brahmanas, Khatriyas, Vaishyas, and Sudras, which we shall find in the last chapter of Bhagavad Gita. But in all cases, one should give up the result or fruits of labor. This means to employ the result of karma for some good cause. In summary, to reach the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the highest goal, there are two processes. One process is by gradual development and the other process is direct. Devotional service in Krishna consciousness is a direct method and the other method involves renouncing the fruits of one's activities. Then one can come to the stage of knowledge, then to the stage of meditation, then to the stage of understanding the super soul, and then to the stage of Supreme Personality of Godhead. One may take either the step-by-step -step process or the direct path. The direct process is not possible for everyone. Therefore, 
the indirect process also good it is however to be understood that the indirect process is not recommended for arjuna because he is already at the stage of love and devotional service to the supreme lord it is for others who are not at the stage for them the gradual process of renunciation knowledge meditation and realization of the super soul and brahman should be followed but as far as bhagavad gita is concerned it is the direct method that is quest everyone is advised to take the direct to the direct method and surrender unto the supreme personality of godhead krishna so we are at the end of this uh, particular section of the chapter number 12 so what we have seen here there are four things lord is trying to say so one is abhyasa abhyasa means practice then jnana that means knowledge then we have jnana that means meditation and fourth one is tyaga that means renouncing fruits of the work so which is better we have understood that tyaga that is renouncing of fruits of work is better so that is the section we have seen in this uh, chapter number 12 verse number 12 now we will stop here and in the next section we will be seeing the last section of this chapter number 12 that is your uh, section number verse number 13 to 20 where exactly uh krishna explaining what are the qualities we will be seeing what are the qualities that are endear to krishna so looking forward to meeting all of you hari krishna